Well, hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to uh, look at how three-phase systems are created. Have you ever wondered by when you're looking at a pole mount transformer arrangement, you have three, we call them cans, and they're mounted to a pole, and then they're connected together, and we have a three-phase power. What we'll do is we'll look at single-phase power first, and then we'll take three single-phase power systems, and we will wire them together to make a three-phase system, and we'll see how it works. So on the screen, we have a single phase power source, 60 Hertz. So that's typical for North America. And if you look below my, where my mouse is, just below the ratings, 120 volt RMS, 60 Hertz, you'll notice that it says zero degrees. Keep that in mind, okay? That's gonna be important when we look at the three phase arrangement. So we have, uh, on the power supply, we have two terminal markings, plus minus. And we know that AC power alternates 60 times a second, right? So it's plus, minus, minus, plus, and so on. So always remember that when you're trying to analyze circuits. Our load is a lamp, and you'll notice it's pulsating. And we also have a heater, right? So we have two types of loads. We have a, we have a, a, a lamp, and then we have a heater. They're both resistive in this case. I'm gonna click on the scope, and you'll notice the waveform. One single phase AC waveform okay now let's take three of these connect them together and make a three-phase source and hopefully that will help us understand how three three-phase power is derived for better understanding of what what we're looking at here um, have a look at the uh, the diagram in the center of the screen now this is a real basic arrangement depicts a three-phase alternator and if you look we have three coils and they're all identical coils but they're spaced 120 degrees apart and then we have a rotating magnet okay it could be electrically excited in this case it's shown as a permanent magnet with a north south pole so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in way in and I only want to concentrate on one of the coils let's just look at coil A and coil A uh, we just looked at a 120 volt power source with an oscilloscope and we saw one waveform okay across the screen so basically if you look at the magnet and if you've studied magnetism and you should have studied magnetism um, you would know that there's the north and south lines of flux and as those lines of flux sweep over a wire they cause a potential or current to flow in one direction if it's connected to a load and as the north lines of flux move off of the coil and then the south lines of flux pass on to the coil or sweep across the coil, they will, they will cause current to flow in the opposite direction. So what happens is every time this north-south magnet rotates, after a full rotation you would notice that you would have current flow in one direction and then current flow in the opposite direction if you had a load connected. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect three single phase sources together to create our alternator source or replicate it so we can understand how this works. And you'll notice we've got our source A, so it's a single phase coil. And then 120 degrees later or rotated 120 degrees, we have B and then 120 degrees after B, we have another coil, C. Okay, so let's let's have a look at that. Now, when you're looking at single phase sources, and if you look at the three that I have on the left, A, B, and C, you'll notice that they're 120 volts RMS, 60 hertz, and each one uh, states zero degrees. And remember earlier, I said to uh, pay attention to uh, to that number because what we have to do if you want to create a three phase source you have to set your phase angle so if you go down to here so phase b we're going to set at 120 degrees click okay phase c we're going to set it at 240 degrees Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to connect it. So 
There's two ways we can connect our three-phase supplies. We can connect them as a delta or a Y. Now, typically in a, in a building system, a uh, building system is fed from a Y, so that, that would be a Y secondary on a transformer, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect all of my pin two locations together. Well, just bear with me here as I do this. Let's just take a second. And you can think about the circuit as I do this. I'm gonna move this ground out of the way. Connect this one. We're gonna have a Y source when I'm finished here. And that node is the right color for us. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to connect our lines. So we have our common connection, our X0 connection. And I'm going to connect the red face, the black face, and the blue phase, red, black, blue. So we'll use an industry. Now we'll have a, we have a load connected here. That load is connected as a delta. We have three bulbs connected, three lamps. Um, so we have phase A, red, phase B, black, phase C, blue. We have a delta load. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get an oscilloscope. We'll bring that oscilloscope in and we'll connect it up, see how the circuit works. We'll take A, we'll connect it to line A, phase A. B, we're gonna go to line B, phase B, and then C, line C, and phase C. Um, I'm gonna change the color of these, of the wires on the oscilloscope so that we can uh, better see the traces. So I'll make this red to reflect the red line. Oh, that's uh, actually, that's a little purpley. <laughs> Change that. It's uh, a little touchy today. It's a Monday. And then that one stays. This one will make blue so we can see them on the screen. Easier. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and run that, and you're going to see three traces. Now, I slowed down the simulation a little bit, but you can clearly see you have three single phase waveforms, but they're spaced 120 degrees apart. Now, the difference between the single phase load that we looked at earlier and the, and the power in the load that we're looking at now, the delta connected load, you'll notice that one light is always on. So in a three phase circuit, the power delivered to the, to the load is always equal at any given time. Whereas the single phase load would turn on and off with the alternating current in the, in the three phase circuit. As I said, power is always equal at any given time, okay? Now, what we need to do now is we need to take a voltmeter and measure the voltage from line to line so that we know what our voltage is going to be. Now, each one of these is 120 volts RMS, but because we are connected together and we're spaced 120 degrees apart, we need to look at the voltage so we understand what's going on there. They're not 180 degrees apart, they're 120 degrees apart. So I have my Agilent meter connected. And I'm going to run it right now. See what comes up. 207.85. So let's just say 208 volts. That's a common system voltage in a building. So what that is, that's 120 volts times the square root of three. So if you measure from line to line, it's gonna be 208 volts. So from line A to B and B to C and C to A. If you measure from A to the common XO or neutral point, it's going to be 120 volts. So there you have it. Three phase system, basic three phase system. Now. In multi-SIM, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to show you sources 
you are going to see, I have to click on my sources, and you're going to notice that we have AC source, DC source, and then we have our three phase delta and our three phase Y. If I click on that three phase Y, this is exactly what we just created using three single phase systems. It's 120 volt line where my mouse is to neutral measurement. But from line to line, it's 208 volts. It's 120 times 1.732. Hope that helps. I'll see you in the next video.